Hello and welcome everyone to our latest presentation on post-mortem findings in COVID-19 and what are its clinical correlations. If you like our presentations, then do subscribe to our channel and please watch our videos till the end so that we are encouraged to produce more quality videos like this. So coming first to COVID-19 and its post-mortem changes. In the lungs, which are the most predominantly affected, what we see is ARDS with lymphocytic infiltrations, microthrombi, intraalveolar fibrin deposits, and finally edema and hemorrhage. Here we see a post-mortem pathological slide showing inflammation and infiltration of the cells along with edema in the alveolar spaces. This is an electron microscopic view of the alveolus showing hyaline membrane formation and the closing of the alveolar pores resulting in decreased oxygenation. Next organ that is affected is the kidney resulting in acute kidney injury. It is associated with acute tubular damage, glomerulopathy, microthrombi, angionephrosclerosis. 30% of the patients present with acute kidney injury. The next is heart resulting in heart failure. There is focal and heterogeneous lymphocytic infiltrations and myocarditis, epicardial inflammation, congestive cardiomyopathy, followed by microthrombi. Next is liver, resulting in liver dysfunction. What is observed is lobular lymphocytic infiltrations, sinusoidal congestion, necrosis, hemophagocytosis, and microthrombi. Finally, it is the brain which is affected with neurotropism. There is microthrombosis resulting in ischemic necrosis, edema formation, and subarachnoid hemorrhage. So all these pathologies predominantly driven by microangiopathy, which is results in microthrombi formations, lymphocytic endothelitis, and necrosis. This is a post-mortem sample showing edematous kidney and a huge thrombus in the IBC, which is predominantly because of the thrombogenic pathophysiology behind COVID disease. So this is a table which summarizes all the findings coming first to the respiratory system. The most common finding is ARDS, which is correlated morphologically by diffuse alveolar damage and ventilator associated pneumonia, which is because of bacterial superinfection. VAP is treated by antibiotics. For ARDS, we can do invasive ventilation. In cardiovascular system, we find thrombi and thromboembolic events and cardiac arrhythmias. The thromboembolic events are because of the thrombi formation, the angiocentric inflammation, for which we can use the anticoagulants and immunosuppressive agents. For the cardiac arrhythmias, which are because of the angiocentric inflammation, it is we can treat with IVIG or steroids. In digestive system, we find elevated liver enzymes, which is because of non-specific liver damage. That is diarrhea and intestinal hemorrhage, which is because of inflammatory changes to hemorrhage with extensive necrosis and destruction of the mucosa. That is elevated amylase and hyperglycemia because of non-specific pancreatic changes. For these, we don't have any specific therapy as of now. In urinary tract, we find renal failure, which is because of acute tubular damage and glomeruropathy. Again, we don't have any specific therapy. In nervous system, we find anosmia, encephalopathy and strokes, which is because of the microthrombi, ischemic necrosis and the vascular edema. Again, there is no specific therapy to prevent this complication. Finally, is the myelop and the lymphopoietic system. There is fever, coagulopathy, pancytopenia. There is inflammation triggered, bone marrow suppression and hemophagocytosis. This can be treated with immunosuppressive agents. So thank you for your patience and check our website for further information.